You're watching Telecom TV from the SDN NFE World Congress in The Hague. And I'm joined now by Axel Klauberg of Deutsche Telekom and Lincom from Intel. Lynn and Axel, thank you both for joining us. Um, you're both founding members of the Telecom Infra Project, TIP. Axel, you're the chairman at the moment, so if I could ask you, tell me a little bit more ab about TIP and why it was created and, and how the founders came together. The first discussions go back into 2015. At that time, the Open Compute project uh, really took off and you could see contributions were coming from others than just Facebook. And there were discussions with lots of the operators at that time. Uh, how can we join Open Compute Project and how can we contribute? That led to the formation of a telco uh, working group within OCP. But it also brought up the question, can't we actually apply that on the overall telco infrastructure? And there was the question, can we run that within OCP? But OCP clearly has different focus. So the idea came up, let's uh, actually build a new organization, the Telecom Infra Project, and this was actually driven by uh, SK Telecom, by Intel, by Nokia, by Facebook, and by Deutsche Telekom, and uh, those were the initial board members as well, uh, bringing TIP to life. I think one of the exciting things and that really inspired Intel in terms of getting involved is the mission, as stated originally, was connecting the unconnected. Uh, and, and the densification in areas that are already connected is a challenge, but also there's many areas in the world that are not connected at all. And you'll find that you know, Intel has a passion for being able to help technology equalize and provide opportunity where there isn't any currently. Connectivity and access to information is a really strategic thing for many areas of the world. And you know, Facebook has many projects in those areas, and we thought this is a great way that we can explore some ability to get deployment and connection where there really hasn't been in the past. And actually, is this a way of, of, of operators um, trying to have more say, more involvement in, in the way networks evolve and are constructed and architected going forward? Well, definitely, we have a lot of experience mm. how networks uh, should be operated also moving forward. Mm. Uh, sure, what we have started with cloudification of network functions mm. a couple of years ago, uh, that was already a first change uh, towards a more radical uh, transformation of this industry. And, uh, but we're very clear, we, we have to continue on this path and we can't do it alone. Because mm. uh, unfortunately on the talent side, uh, telcos are not the most attractive place to work at for top talent coming from universities. Our vendors are not either. Uh, so back in the 90s that was different. But uh, nowadays people want to join an internet company, they want to join Google, Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, maybe Amazon, uh, Azure, and if they can join them, maybe build the startup on, them, on, the, on the, themselves. So that's the situation we have to fa uh, face, and uh, we have to use that to our advantage by pulling those people in to this community-driven R&D approach. So, so telcos, not necessarily as sexy as maybe they, they, they once were or once thought they were, you need to attract the, the best talent mm -hmm. and, and create more of an innovation culture. Yeah. A lot, a lot of uh, open innovation mm -hmm. has been a very difficult challenge uh, for other reasons within the telecommunications industry. And so TIP is a great example where the, all the members were expected to do a contribution, at least the founding members. Mm -hmm. And so things like FlexRAN and, and our multi-access edge reference platforms were things that Intel put in because we are not going to be the ones productizing it, nor are we going to be the ones carrying it into certain countries and certain operating areas. But we see it as a baseline innovation that if you have innovative players from universities or innovative players from cloud service providers or innovative players within the telecommunications industry, we can all move that ball forward together. How focused are you? I don't say closed, but are you welcoming of, of, of other members, whether they be operators or vendors? Are you, do, you, do you want to encourage as, as, as many participants as possible? Absolutely, so we have a, a more than 450 members in TIP uh, today. But uh, the difficulty is actually to get active contributions. I think what Lynn just mentioned is absolutely needed. You need someone to seed an activity and uh, to kind of give the direction and then others are jumping in and here, uh, we have lots of work areas within TIP where this was actually uh, successful. The open optical work uh, in, where the seed actually came from Facebook uh, is a great example because uh, this is by far the largest project group uh, within uh, TIP uh, nowadays and they are producing tangible outcome. And a lot of uh, 
vendors have joined that as well, as did a lot of operators. Just uh, last week, uh, Tim Brazil announced the opening of a TIP community lab focused on that. So you see it's, it's actually gaining global traction. So the more operators join, the more, say, the traditional vendors will want to take part as well to ensure they're not sort of pushed out to one side and, and are still an active, active participant in this, in this ecosystem? Well, it's a symbiotic relationship, mm. really. I mean, the operators don't necessarily want to be equipment providers, and then the suppliers definitely do want to stay in the market. And it's really just understanding how can we refactor some of the ways that R&D and commercial relationships work so that there's a little bit more shared innovation and community on the R&D side, and then that hopefully will accelerate the commercial side as well. Who drives the agenda in a way. What, because you, we're talking about disruption, we want to see more disruption. We, we, you were talking, Axel, in your keynote at, at the event today um, about traffic growth. Increasing traffic growth means we need more radical approaches to, to deliver more efficient capital. So th with this disruption, who's actually driving the agenda and says, what, what, to what extent is disruption possible? I mean, how, how disruptive do you really want to be? Well, it's a difficult question actually because it, it depends on the, on the area you're looking at. So um, let's take uh, our newest uh, project group, Millimeter Wave, as one example. Uh, here, Facebook announced their Terragraph uh, project uh, in April last year and that created a lot of uh, interest in the industry all over because uh, it's using an extremely interesting part of the spectrum, the 60 gigahertz unlicensed range. And uh, that was of key interest for us as an operator uh, as we, uh, we're already working with uh, 60 gigahertz technologies and what uh, was brought in by Facebook here is uh, actually uh, uh, the routing is done in, in the cloud scenario. Uh, the mesh uh, was brought in uh, which actually make, makes this uh, setup work overall. And uh, we then came together and found there are actually lots of interesting areas where we with our experience for example on the economic models, on the uh, network planning, and Facebook on the other side with their experience using AI technologies, for example, for automated planning, can actually work together and, and this way uh, really lead to what I sometimes call exponential innovation. Another question, given the fact that this industry, telecoms industry, is very standards driven, there's a lot of regulation in it, there's a lot of IPR at, at, at stake, um, how, how successful can it be? Are, are you facing more barriers because of the historical nature of telecoms. Well, one of the interesting things about the way that TIP is structured that I think gives a little bit more flexibility is there's really two approaches with the IPR. And so each work group has a very different arrangement potentially that makes sense for mm. where you're working within the network. So you can have shared innovation, but you're not necessarily um, overly constrained by open source only, or overly constrained by navigating too much around IPR. So I think that they've really blended the best of both worlds. Absolutely, it, it made our lives slightly more complex because compared to OCP where you just uh, uh, become a member of the Open Compute project, uh, here you have to sign up per project group because you have to accept the IPR terms which are specific per project group. It's either royalty free or most of our project groups are actually following rent terms, so it's a little bit more administration which is needed, but uh, we want to honor the IPR, our members bring in as well, because the idea is based on that existing foundation, you, you actually build on top of that and uh, drive towards uh, new goals. And TIP has an annual meeting, I know there's one coming up very, very soon, what do you both hope to see? What, what's, what's the goal for, for this year and the next, next 12 months moving forward? TIP is a collaborative effort. So. Collaboration depends on, on people working together. So it's very important for us to actually have people together in one location, to have face-to-face uh, -face discussions, uh, stimulating the next phase of this collaboration. So it's not a traditional event, but it's really bringing the people together who are driving this innovation. And uh, it's taking place in the Santa Clara Convention Center on November 8th and 9th, and uh, really looking forward uh, to that great event. 
Great. And Lynn, what, what does um, Intel hope to see TIP achieve over the next 12 months? I think what would be super exciting is to see these project groups, not just uh, doing the trials, but also moving in a faster pace into deployments. You know, getting a deployment out within under four years is, is quite an undertaking for any organization where you're talking open source, or you're, you're talking uh, some of the standards projects. So going and doing that accelerated time from innovation to trial to deployment, I think would be super exciting to see. Great, well, hope to see it. And Lynn, Axel, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you.